Hey y'all, Bill Quirk with the Defensive Training Group and Shoot GTR. Here today to do another quick video, this time talking about holsters. So when we look at concealed carry, uh, duty use, competition use, range use in general, a holster is an important component that we need to consider and give appropriate um, weight to. A lot of times people get a good gun, they get good ammunition, magazines and whatnot. They, they spend all the time on the gun, but they don't really pay attention to the holster or the belt. The belt's another important thing, but we'll save that for another video. So uh, today I want to talk about holsters and why they're important, and just to give you some tips on what makes a good holster and perhaps a not so good holster. So we're going to start with the good, and these are two brands that we sell in the pro shop here at Shoot GTR. This is the Raven Perrin from Raven Concealment, and this is a T5 Custom Kydex uh, Appendix Holster, AIWB holster. So these are both light bearing. This one is for a Walther PDP with a Surefire X300. And this one is for a Glock 17, uh, also with a Surefire X300 attached. So what makes a holster a good holster? Several things that we want. We want something that's gonna allow us to get a good solid shooting grip while the gun is still holstered up. And I'm gonna show you on some other examples of where this is not the case and where the, the cut of the holster precludes you, let me turn it around so you can see it better, uh, precludes you from getting that good solid shooting grip as you go to uh, withdraw the pistol from the holster. So that's something that's important. We want something, especially with our modern striker fired semi-automatic pistols where there's no manual safety, we want something that fully covers the trigger guard and keeps anything from getting in there and potentially uh, pressing that trigger, activating that trigger and causing a discharge. Now, uh, just to point out, when you're running a weapon light, a lot of times there's gonna be a bit more of a gap here because the holster mouth has to be wide enough to accommodate that weapon light. And the weapon light does extend a little bit uh, wider than the frame of the gun. But done properly, you can still have something that is going to give you good security. You can see on this one, there's no gap there for you to be able to get into, uh, get something in there and press that trigger. And that's an important feature. You want something that when you withdraw the weapon, it's not gonna collapse. That's one of the benefits of the, uh, the thermoplastics, the Kydex, Voltron, all those types of things, is uh, they're rigid and uh, proper holster design is gonna be as comfortable as possible, but these are rigid so they're not gonna collapse once you withdraw the weapon. And that's gonna allow you to more uh, readily reholster the weapon without having to fight it back in, potentially flag yourself or something like that. Um, you can achieve the same rigidity with leather, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, like I said, these are the thermoplastics. Um, and you want the holster to be uh, as comfortable as possible, and that's something that bears some consideration. Um, wearing the holster, wearing the holstered gun is never going to be as comfortable as not wearing the holstered gun, and you do need to make some accommodations in your clothing to uh, allow for this package, especially inside the waistband. That's where the belt comes in, that's where the clothing choices come in that, that can, can assist with that. But subtle nuances in different holsters. So I might have, and I have a lot of holsters, as we've discussed before, um, I might have 10 different appendix holsters that look roughly the same as this one. And five of them are rel relatively comfortable and they feel pretty good when I put them on. And then these five feel like uh, I'm shoving a pine cone into my waistband. Um, it's just slight nuances in the design of the holster that are gonna make a big difference for the end user based on where you wear the gun, your body type, uh, clothing, all that sort of stuff. And that's why picking a holster for you at the end of the day is an individual journey of exploration. And it's well known that when you get into concealed carry and whatnot, you're gonna end up pretty quickly with a box full of holsters that you thought were gonna be good, but didn't quite end up that way. But I, I kind of get off topic there. So getting back to the holsters, you want something that's gonna be as comfortable as possible. And uh, that's gonna factor in a lot to the design of the holster, round edges, good edge design so it's not digging into you and stuff along those lines. And you want something that's gonna retain the holster or retain the pistol rather when the gun is holstered. We don't want it to fall out. Um, so these are all things that make a good holster. And there's some other considerations as well, but these are the big ones that I wanted to talk about. So good holsters. Now let's compare these to some perhaps not so good holsters. So these are just nylon chew toys. And um, these are things that I had uh, from much earlier in my career. And, and I've got a big box of them at the house. 
with everything else. And this one in particular is from a company called Shooting Systems, and it's very well made. It's a very uh, well made, uh, rigid, or not rigid, but uh, durable nylon holster. Uh, it's ambidextrous, pretty decent spring clip here. But you're going to notice several things that make this holster less than desirable. So the first thing, I talked about a good firing grip. You can see this does not allow you to get a good firing grip. I'm having to fish the pistol out of the holster in order to get my fingers down to establish that master grip. Um, because this is floppy, it may be a little bit more comfortable when you wear it, but when we withdraw the pistol, it's going to collapse. And we are going to find ourselves in a position of wrestling the gun back into the holster when we're trying to reholster trying to pry this open in order to get the gun in. Um, because it is uh, not, not rigid, it is possible, not really likely, but it is possible that something could apply enough pressure on the exterior of the holster to get in there and activate the trigger, so that is a consideration. Um, but generally, this is just not gonna give us the, uh, the, the performance that we're looking for because of the things that I've talked about. This is another example. This is an old Uncle Mike's holster with an adjustable thumb brake. And the nice thing about these, you can see it's kind of falling apart here because this has been in a box for a while. This is probably 25, almost 30 years old. Um, this one, again, a little bit better uh, access there, but I'm still having to jam my hand in against the holster in order to build that master grip and kind of fish the gun out a little bit. And again, it's going to collapse as soon as that weapon is withdrawn. Uh, the benefit of something like this or this one is they are uh, they're they're more universal in their fitment. But as I said, when we're looking for uh, to maximize our performance, we want something that's going to, to fit the weapon and give us those those benefits that I talked about with the Kydex ones. Okay. So these are the uh, the bad. I'm not going to talk about those anymore. Um, in between, some people still like leather. And leather is uh, is a good compromise. It can be very viable. There's a bit more uh, craftsmanship that goes into these sometimes, a bit more pride of ownership type of thing. And you can still find some good leather custom holsters out there on the market. Um, this does require more of a craftsman to make these things uh, with all the stuff that goes into them. And not all holsters, all leather holsters are created equal. So this is, uh, you can see this is kind of scarred up. I used to use this. Um, and plain clothes on duty. Uh, this is a good holster. It's from a company called Galco, and they are known for making very good leather holsters. But I do want to just show you here that good solid fit. It's not going to come out. It's a pancake holster, so as the belt comes through these loops and applies pressure against the body, it's going to actually increase the retention of the weapon in the holster. But um, even though there is a good deal of detail molding on the outside here, this is still kind of flexible, kind of kind of soft, which will help with comfort, but at the same time, when you withdraw the weapon because of that tension of the belt, now it's gonna to act to your detriment and this is gonna collapse, making it harder for you to reholster. This is from a company called Mitch Rosen, and he is a custom manufacturer, not a mass-produced manufacturer. And you will notice this is leather, but this is much more rigid in structure. And it's the way that it's dyed, it's the way that it's designed, um, the boning and whatnot, and just the construction things that go into this, uh, the preparation of the leather and whatnot. But you will, you can hear it. When I insert this into the uh, holster, it actually snaps in place. And there's a detent on the back of the trigger guard here, one on the front as well, that actually lock this in place. So this is very, very stable. And when I withdraw this weapon, this isn't gonna collapse quite as much. It's a little bit of flex there, but uh, this is gonna give you um, at least for the reholstering, some, some better performance because of the, the construction and effort that went into designing and building this holster. So not bad, but better, okay? We have some other things we can talk about, retention type of holsters. And uh, we also sell these. Um, these are both from Safari Land. This is what's called the ALS, Automatic Locking System. This is the GLS for Grip Locking System. And uh, if you want something, whether for competition, whether for range use, for whatever the purpose, but you want something with a bit more uh, active retention. So what we say is this is passive retention. It's just the molding, but there's no active feature that's keeping the weapon in the holster. This is active retention. I actually have to disengage this switch. Gun will not come out until I press that switch and that's gonna release the weapon. In the case of the GLS, it's this grip tab down here. So gun goes into the holster, 
it's locked in place as I build the grip that is released and uh, the weapon can be withdrawn at that point. So these are active retention holsters, still designed for concealment. Um, these are very popular in law enforcement for plainclothes officers. This one's particularly a setup with a paddle. So uh, not my first choice because anything that's designed to be quickly removed from the belt might be quickly removed from the belt. And so I've seen these as people are drawing, the entire package comes with it. And uh, obviously that's uh, less than desirable in a critical situation. But uh, for some people, these are, if you're gonna be taking the gun off and on a lot, this does give you a little bit more convenience. Your mileage may vary. But um, you can also put a belt loop on this thing. This is a 6377 or 6378 is the model number. And uh, like I said, it's got the ALS switch here. So as I build my grip, I press that switch and it's very automatic, very ergonomic, and I can withdraw the weapon. In the case of the GLS, this one is actually meant for inside the waistband and uh, does give you some active uh, active retention for an inside the waistband concealment holster. And they make a couple different versions of this. And I trust that weapon can come out. Okay. So uh, this is just a quick overview just to talk about some different uh, considerations when you're picking your holster. The holster really is important because it's what's going to carry the weapon uh, safely, keep the weapon from falling out, keep the weapon from uh, being put in a position where there could be an unintentional discharge. Um, it, uh, it's definitely not something for you to skimp on. So you wanna make sure that you're getting a good, a good product, something that's gonna work with you. And, and unfortunately, as you go through your journey, you're probably gonna end up with multiple holsters over the, uh, the weeks, months, years. As your needs change, as, uh, as your body changes, as you make uh, better decisions or, or discover more information about what's gonna work and what's not gonna work for you. So as always, uh, if you found this video to be informative, please give us a like, give us a share. If you have any questions, put them below, any comments, put them below, and y'all stay safe.